What's going on? This is Jason Heath, and I am talking to you today about bows and the quest for the perfect bow. I haven't bought a new bow in a while, but it's a very easy thing for me to get obsessed with, so I'm, tr I'm trying not to. Uh, I have a beautiful Baron Doling bow that I got about 10 years ago, and I have a backup bow, which is this great carbon fiber bow from the String Emporium, Steve Kosika, a finale bow. The problem with these cheaper bows is they're not balanced well, they don't get much of a sound, you don't get a lot of bass out of them, and they cause you to overcompensate to, to develop bad habits if you're not careful. Every time I pick up one of these cheap fiberglass bows, I find myself having to fight with the bow and fight with the instrument, and I can almost feel these bad habits coming back in. So when you're looking for a new bow, you gotta ask yourself if you wanna get a wood bow or a carbon fiber bow. And that's an important thing to think about. A Coda and many other companies make excellent carbon fiber bows. Personally, I just have always loved playing on Pernambuco, but there are other woods too. There's snake wood bows, and there are all different kinds of innovations happening in bows. What I'm looking for in a bow is something that feels well balanced. I'm not too concerned about the overall weight. Base bows can go as light as 120 grams or even less or up into the 200s. Donovan Stokes, the wonderful bass player, plays on these unbelievably heavy bows and very long bows too and they work great for him. So it's going to vary depending on the type of playing you're doing, the type of player you are, and the type of bass you have. Unless you're in a major urban area, it can also be hard to find bows. I'm lucky in that I live in San Francisco. We've got several good options. If you're in a big city like London or New York or uh, Paris, you're going to have a lot of options for bows and it gets a little more challenging when you get to a smaller place. Luckily, many companies like Lemur Music or Robertson & Sons will send out bows for you to try. But even if you don't do that, that first bow upgrade that into the maybe like around $1,000 bow, uh, you could get a Coda bow for around that that's going to work great. Or if you're lucky enough to be in a bigger area or if you can visit a bigger area, and we've got these all listed at doublebaseblog.org slash links if you want to check out some of the major bass shops in the world. Uh, check those out. Violin shops generally don't have a whole lot of bass bows, but you might get lucky. Everywhere is different depending on where you live. You can also find a lot of good options on the internet, and asking about bows on Facebook is a great way to do it, so definitely consider that as well. No matter what you do, you want to have some time with that bow. You want to get a chance to try it out, try it out on your instrument, and if you're a student, Student, you want to take that bow to your teacher and have them play. I always cringe when I have a student walk in and say, hey, I just bought this new bow. I say, why didn't you show me the bow? Because it's so important to make sure that you're getting a bow that matches your needs, your where you are, uh, that there's not anything strange about the bow, or the bow might have some structural defects, or it just doesn't play well. Uh, if you're new to the base, if you're, if you're a student, definitely have someone check it out. And you also, even if you're a professional, uh, meet up with some colleagues and have them play that bow so that you can listen. Because a good bow is going to draw out a full sound, a big bass sound. When I got my Baron Doling bow, all of a sudden I felt like I got a subwoofer attached to my bass. And it felt light and easy to play and it just it was transformative for my playing. Also, never try out just one bow. That is a very dangerous thing to do. You want to have some options. Uh, even if you find this bow that you think is amazing and hey, maybe you will end up buying that specific bow. You you want to try out a variety of options, a variety of price points. It's the same exact thing you want to do when you're buying a base. You don't want to just grab the first thing that's available. Uh, it is possible that the first thing you try will end up being the thing you get, but an informed decision is so important. So get your hands on more than one bow when you're looking. Although you can find a great deal online, unless you really know what you're doing or you're working with a teacher that really knows what they're doing, I tend to shy away from looking for bows on eBay or that kind of thing. You can find some wonderful bows on eBay, for sure, and other sources online, but you, I recommend uh, working with your teacher or working with a shop, going in person and trying them out just to eliminate some of those variables. So we've talked about those entry-level bows, which you want to get off of those $100 bows, bows in that price range, and then that next level of bow, around $1,000, maybe a carbon fiber bow, maybe a Pernambuco bow, if you can find a good deal on it, and then you're getting into the professional territory. So the bow that's going to take you through the years and that you can really grow and develop as a player. So that's like my doling bow or so many other great makers out there right now. And 
that's when you really wanna take your time and you wanna go to a shop and you wanna spend some time and try different weights and different makers or maybe consider having a bow maker custom make a bow just for you and if you do that, I've never done that personally but I know so many people that have and they've got great results from that. Just do some research and look into some people that are making bows that people are really excited about. You can find them on my website, doublebaseblog.org. We've got lots of links to bow makers and the like. I've interviewed bow makers over the years. We'll put some links to that in the description below. And just know that for that sort of third level of bow, that professional bow, that career bow, that is a journey that you might be on for decades. So uh, people find a bow and then it seems like they need another bow for a different type of playing situation or they grow as a player or they change bases and they find that this other sort of bow seems to work better or maybe one bow works better for early music playing and one's better for solo playing and one's better for orchestra playing. So everybody's a little bit different. Me, I just have the doling and <laughs> maybe it's just because I can't afford a whole bunch of expensive bows, but the doling seems to work pretty well for me in just about any circumstance. Maybe in the future I'll get something that's better for early music or that's a little lighter for types of solo playing. There's no right answer that's going to work for everybody's needs, but I really think of this as kind of a three-step process. There's what you start off on and, and then as soon as you can, I recommend that people move on to that next level, generally around $1,000 or maybe a little more or less. And then after they've been playing for a little while, I mean, really as soon as you can, but generally after people have been playing for a few years, start looking for that bow that's really going to take you into what you want to be doing on the instrument. I have a lot of people ask me, should I get a bow or should I get a bass? And I actually usually recommend that students get a bow first before the bass because the bow has such an impact on your playing and you can afford a pretty good bow more quickly generally than you can afford a really nice bass. So I tell folks, get the bow first and then look for that bass that's gonna take you to where you need to go. That's just a little bit about bows. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Check out those links in the description. We'll see you in the next video.